Today we're gonna to be talking about the 10 most profitable DIY, do-it-yourself renovations that you can get started on today. Now these renovations are designed to cost you a little bit of money, but to make you a lot of money in your home's value. And we're jumping on that right after this. My name is Steve Arthur and I am a local realtor here with Nationwide Real Estate Executives in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities. Now, if this is your first time seeing me here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell for future notifications because I do put out videos every single week about Long Beach, about the surrounding cities, about the things that you wanna know about, where you wanna work, where you wanna live, where you wanna eat, where you want to play, of course. And even the 10 most profitable DIY projects that you can get started on today. Now seriously, I have been helping so many people relocate to the Long Beach area or one of the surrounding cities through this channel. And I absolutely love it when people get hold of me through this channel. So if you or anybody that you may know is in need of a realtor in the Long Beach area or one of the surrounding cities, all you have to do is reach out to me, send me an email, shoot me a text, or just register on my website and I will personally reach out to you. So jump on the top 10 DIY projects, but today we're only gonna cover one through five because these are kind of lengthy. Next week, we will do six through 10. The number one, it's on the top of the list is painting your cabinet. Now, most people would look at a kitchen like this with the outdated cabinets, dark and grungy, and the, the dark tile grout lines, and either walk away or just to think to themselves, you know what, a hammer can take care of this. That sounds like fun. But do you know when that fun always stops? Is when they get that first bid from the contractor for $40,000 just to put things back together for a relatively basic kitchen. Now, if you want great quality, you can go and spend a $80,000 to $100,000. But I will tell you, those are money losing projects. So let me show you how painting your cabinets can make a lot of money out of a little bit of money. Painting your cabinets basically takes your old crappy cabinets that are dungy and dirty, and they transform them into something new and beautiful. Now, if this is an option for you, there are two rules of thumb for you that it is imperative that you follow. Number one, use a high quality primer and a high quality paint. So let's go back to painting basics 101. When you have a great base coat with properly prepped, the final look will last long and look beautiful. Now the second rule of thumb is to apply the paint with a sprayer to get that near factory finish without having to buy new cabinetry. Now brushing on stains and rolling on paint, that might sound fun because basically you can get started right away. Just go down to Lowe's or a Home Depot, buy the paint, buy the rollers, wash down your cabinets and go. So you wouldn't have to do a lot of prep work and you wouldn't have to do a lot of spraying. But there's always one big lesson to learn while painting. So back to painting 101, the more prep you do, the more profit you make. So just remember PPP. Painting, question mark, prep equals profit. Now, a project like this, depending on the size of your kitchen, will typically run about five to $700, but it is probably going to yield you between five to $15,000. And that's why this DIY project tops the list as one of the most profitable DIY projects that you can do to your home. So number two is Formica countertops. We love to hate them. So if you got one of those Formica countertops where it's got stains all over it, it's got burn marks from putting the pots right out of the oven, straight onto it, but you do not have to rip out that old countertop and replace it with a $5,000, $8,000 stone countertop. All you have to do is wrap it up. Take it. Wrap it. With a quick DIY project, you can literally just wrap it. You can literally just wrap your old countertop with an adhesive film that you can get on Amazon for relatively inexpensive, I think like $27 a roll. There is a link down below for that too. Now, you do have to be careful with doing it that you don't trap any air bubbles in it and make sure that you trim your sheets appropriately. 
And usually I recommend that you get a couple of extra rolls so you can practice on it. If you do get a little bit of imperfection, don't keep going. Just pull it up, start over. That's all I can recommend, because once you start with that little imperfection, it will grow. Because this material is so inexpensive, it's just not worth it to have it look bad. So just get a couple of rolls so you don't feel bad about the learning curve, and you'll, you'll learn it. And once you get going on it, you'll find you can do this relatively fast. And you should only probably be in this project for about $200, but you can yield about two to $3,000. Wrap it up, I'll take it. In which, once you get the hang of it, you can make some pretty quick work doing this. And you might even like the look so much that you might want to go in and look at your bathroom countertops. But also note, or please note, that this will not be good at all whatsoever. It'll look like crap if you use it on a tile countertop. It has to be a solid surface like a Formica butcher block, something to that effect. Well, since we're on the subject of tile, let's go to the next one, number three. Are you tired? You just walk into those homes. I see this all the time, too. You walk into these homes, and it's just got the pink tile bathroom, the blue colored but tile everywhere, the pink bathtub. Fortunately, there is a really cool DIY project that you can make a quick work of turning your old, ugly tile into something looking like this. Basically, it's painting your tile, also known as reglazing. So you can turn a pink or blue or any colored bathtub into a beautiful polished looking bathtub over a weekend. You can pick up kits on Amazon or at Home Depot, Lowe's. If you are gonna do this though, I do recommend that you don't use that little foam roller that they give you. It's not good, it doesn't work. I just, I strongly recommend that you use a sprayer that we were talking about earlier. If you're gonna be just doing it once, one time only, just rent one unless you feel the need to buy one. But if you're going to be just doing it one time, just rent it so you don't end up with the garage full of tools that you'll never use again. Now, before you start painting is part of the prep work. Remove all that old, dirty, moldy, mildew and caulking. Because you want to get rid of that old, dirty caulk before you start applying this material. Because you don't want to trap that crap and you really could end up with an improper finish if you do not prep properly. Remember those three P's? Well, they apply here as well. Now for this project, you might be out around $150 to $200. By eliminating those old and tired colors, it can really transform the look and feel of a bathroom, really modernizing something relatively quickly. Where you can generate up to three to $5,000. In 10 years, no problem. I've been from others and others, 10 to 15 years. I can only go off of a personal project I did seven years ago, and it still looks fantastic. But if this is a rental property and you're looking, you have to do this every seven to 10 years, that's no problem in my book. It's way cheaper than replacing everything. Now I found out about real estate is to figure out about exactly where you can spend the least amount of money to make the most amount of money. Usually we'll be going thinking, okay, if I want to do a home improvement, I'm looking at about 50 grand on a high quality setup, the master bathroom with the entrance to it, and we budgeted $50,000 to have the awesomest bathroom ever. Well, usually the less you spend, the more you make. So keep that in mind when it comes to real estate. Now number four is everybody's favorite job. You walk in, you see that old popcorn ceiling, you say, ah, we'll just scrape that stuff right off. Yeah, at least it's one of my favorite DIY jobs because I love scraping overhead and my neck killing, my arms killing me. And that's after about three minutes. But you all know what I'm talking about, that old acoustic stuff, AKA the popcorn ceiling. It's ugly, it's dark, it's dungy, it's attractive, it's got every stain in the world up. But the big selling pitch back in the day when they did this was, it will cut that back on the reverb, you're soundproofing. When in reality, it was just a cheap way to finish the ceiling drywall. It was really, really easy and cheap way for the builders to get away finishing the projects really fast because they can hide everything underneath that. You got the old carpenter's term. 
cock and paint, what it ain't. Well, the same applies here. They just shot that acoustic and everything in the world was hidden. Now, scraping these ceilings can be a very high DIY return on your investment. But there's a special note here if you are going to tackle this yourself. If your home was built before 1978, and I would even say up to 1980, now there is a chance that that acoustic ceiling popcorn might contain asbestos. Now there is a quick and simple way to test for this. Now the first thing you do is get one of those industrial masks. I'm sure we've all seen them here lately. I think they're the P100 respirator and you want the dust filter, not the generic filter. Because after all, you, you might be dealing with asbestos. Get some gloves, long sleeve shirt, just scrape off a little corner, put it into a Ziploc bag, then you're going to send it off to a lab like Western Analytical here in Los Angeles. And you get on the website, I think it's like $50. So you send your sample in there with a check for $50. And so they will email you if you have asbestos in those fibers or not. So if you do, the best thing to do at that point is hire a professional. But still, if you want to uh, scrape the ceilings yourself, you can. Just make sure you do the proper research so that you are not only wearing the proper P100 filters, but you are testing the fit appropriately. You're renting and operating a triple filter HEPA filtration machine so you can really get the air out of there. And you can pretty inexpensively set up a negative air pressure containment. It is really easy. Now I know it sounds complicated. Basically you're just putting a bag around your room by blowing it out of the window. That way when you exit the room, air comes into the room rather than out of the room. That way the only way the air can get out is through that triple filter system. So just remember that you know you are working overhead, you don't know how long it's going to take you, so start off in a small area so you can kind of scale how long it takes you per area because you don't want to be halfway through the living room and say, oh, I'll get the rest of it next week. You don't want to do that. Get it in one shot. So start in a small area in a bedroom where you can just kind of get a uh, scale how fast it takes you. So you can decide on how fast, how rooms, and everything else. Now, the really cool thing about this project is it is relatively low cost. It's mostly spending money on drywall uh, materials so you can put a light skim coat after scraping. So any stains that have soaked through through the years or even those old yellow nicotine smoke. <laughs> I know everybody's walking into those houses and you see where they sat there and watch TV and smoke. <laughs> Big ol' yellow ring right above them. Because the majority of this job is mostly labor, you should expect to spend around two to three hundred dollars for the drywall and for that good primer we had talked about. But this is how you build your sweat equity by having that nice smooth ceiling throughout your entire house or even with a, just a light texture rather than that dark old stained dungy acoustic ceiling popcorn that you don't know if it's acoustic, it could be, it might not be, who knows till we get tested. But by scraping it and giving that smooth look, you can modernize your property so much that, it can, that you could probably see a benefit between four to eight thousand dollars. Now another thing is baseboards and molding. Get rid of that old one and a half inch little pinstripe baseboards that's been there since the house was built. Okay now replace them with some four or five inch beautiful craftsman style. They're all a rage right now and they're easily easily available but here's a little designer tip you can also use these crafts craftsman style baseboards around your door frames around your window frame to really classy up your property just by adding some inexpensive molding now a new project like this should run about four to five hundred dollars for baseboard material and paint where you can yield a profit between thirty five hundred and forty five hundred dollars Again, my name is Steve Arthur and I am a local real. So if you found this video helpful, do me a little uh, favor and hit that like, maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to see the future content because I do put out these videos every single week. Until next week, six through 10, coming up, stay safe, see you then.